Hi bookish besties, my name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. And if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today we are here to talk about starting a booktube channel. So in full transparency, I debated whether or not I was going to make and post this video, and that's primarily because I didn't know if I actually had the expertise or if I was going to be perceived as having the expertise in order to create this video. I am obviously still a very small booktube content creator, and I will probably always remain a small booktube content creator. And that is primarily because I don't have the time, the energy, or the interest in catering to what is typically popular in the booktube or even just the YouTube community in general. So I'm certainly not here to tell you how best to grow your your channel and be super successful at your channel. I am primarily here to give you foundational tips and tricks that you might find useful if you have been debating on starting a booktube channel. This is a space for content creators of any size and I think we need to be hearing from content creators of all sizes and so that's why I made the decision to go ahead and post this video. I hope that you find what I'm including here helpful. I don't really have anything super structured or planned out. I just have a couple of bullet points that I want to touch upon. So what I first have to say it's not really a tip or advice. It's really encouragement and that is to just do it. Just take the plunge, sit down, and film a video. And I know that can seem very daunting and overwhelming, especially if you're like me, if you're a planner, if you're an organizer, if you're a type A. If you want absolutely everything figured out before you hit record on the video, I completely understand because that is where I was too. But I have found that this type of personality that we have, which typically makes us a very effective, efficient, productive, competent human being, can also hold us back from actually doing what we want to do for the sake of perfection. We're always waiting for the right time. We're we're always waiting to have every single duck in a row before we pull the plug and actually get started. And to be honest, there's just never going to be the right time. So stop waiting for the right time. Stop trying to make everything perfect. Stop trying to plan every little detail and just do it. Getting started is often the hardest part of any project. It's often why we hear people say, oh, well, I'll start that diet and workout in the new year, or I'll start it on Monday, or I'll start that project tomorrow, rather than just jumping in and going for it. Because getting started is always the most daunting part. But if you just start, if you sit down and you hit record on that video, you can figure everything else out as you go. And as soon as you're overcoming those first few hurdles, then you're going to have the momentum and it's going to be easier to keep going and stay going. And we're very fortunate here in the booktube community that there is actually a tag. It's called the booktube newbie tag. It's a tag that pretty much everybody who starts on booktube does. And it's a great way to introduce yourself and your channel to the booktube space. And it makes it so you don't really have to think too hard about the first video that you are going to post on booktube. So it takes some of the pressure off and that regard. You can sit down, you can have the booktube newbie questions in front of you, and you can just sit and chat and introduce everybody to you and your channel. So really, I cannot stress this enough. If you have been considering starting a booktube channel, please just go ahead and do it and start figuring everything else as you go. Now, I definitely do have some practical tips and considerations to keep in mind when you're starting on booktube or things that you might want to keep in mind before you film that first video. And first, I'm going to say that you do not need fancy equipment in order to start a YouTube channel. I have always only ever filmed on my phone. Do I feel like having a genuine camera would probably increase the quality of my videos? Absolutely I do. But for the most part, a lot of the cameras on today's smartphones are pretty high quality and you can definitely do a lot with a camera that is on your phone. So don't feel like you need to go out and buy a camera or any other equipment really in order to sit down and film a video because that's just not true. So please don't let the idea of needing all of this fancy equipment stop you from doing it. Now when you are sitting down to film, here are some things to keep in mind. And perhaps the biggest one is definitely lighting. Nobody likes to see grungy yellow lighting in the YouTube video. I would say that the best way to ensure that your videos are well lit is to ensure that you are filming with natural lighting. So making sure that you are filming during the day when the lighting is bright and you are able to get the best lighting in your space. Now that's not to say that there aren't challenges with natural lighting. I mean, there are plenty of times when I'm filming a video and I don't notice, but I go back and edit and I realize that my videos are going super bright and then dark, super bright and then dark. And that's because the sun is doing whatever it wants to do. But I think it's still better to have that type of lighting than it is to have yellow grungy lighting. So that would be probably my top consideration when you are filming a booktube video because lighting definitely matters. And if at all possible, I would suggest filming in an area that has limited background noise and distractions. It might not always be entirely possible, but when you're filming a video, you want to make it so that people are able to easily understand what you're saying and you want them to focus on you. You don't want them to 
focus on the chaos that might be going on in your background. So try to film in an area that has little to no background noise and limited distractions. To be honest, you don't need your background to look like mine. You do not need to have the beautiful bookshelves in the background in order to consider yourself a real booktuber. There are plenty of people on this space who do not have a background like mine because maybe they don't prefer to collect physical books and that is perfectly valid. That is okay. So don't so much worry about your background as you are worrying about the lighting and the noise of your video. And the third tip I can think of when you are starting to sit down and film a video is try to talk to the camera as though you were talking to a friend. I think that it's pretty universal that when people are starting a channel and they're sitting down to film for the first time, it can be a little bit awkward because you are just sitting here talking to your phone, talking to a camera, and nobody is talking back to you, right? It can be a little bit intimidating. Maybe it's even a little bit embarrassing. Who knows? But something that's of major importance, and I think it's something that you probably inherently understand, is that we want to see your personality shine through. And so if you're trying to reach an audience, if you're trying to build that community, we want your personality to shine through. So just sit down and talk like you're talking to a friend and just be as natural as you possibly can. Let the booktube community see who you are and then the right people will naturally gravitate towards you and your channel. Those are my top three tips. Make sure you have decent lighting. Make sure you are filming in an area that is noise and distraction free and sit down and talk to the camera as though you were talking to a friend because pretty soon you're going to be. You are going to be talking to all the friends that you are making on this platform because that is what a lot of us are really here for. Building that community, making those friendships, connecting with other readers when we might not have readers in our lives at this time that we can connect to. Now really quickly I want to touch upon editing because editing was certainly the biggest learning curve that I had when I started a YouTube channel. I had never before used any type of video editing software and I am 100% not an expert on editing. In fact my editing skills are still very basic overall in comparison to a lot of other booktube content creators. I've had to teach myself specific things over the time like how to put a book up here on the screen, how to do like a video in a video situation, how to add sound effects and all of that good stuff and color correct and do all of that in my video and it all came with time and even still I'm not perfect at it. Sometimes I might not even be very good at it but I can definitely tell you that I am leagues better than I was when I first started on booktube and it's something that you are going to learn and be able to do as you get started. What editing software you decide to do is completely up to you. This is another thing that I'm not very knowledgeable about. I chose to edit on Wondershare Filmora. I know that a lot of people utilize Apple so there's an editing software that's specific to Apple and MacBook and things like that so maybe you want to do that and the only reason why I'm mentioning editing here is because I want to make a crucial point that I think is missed with a lot of content creators and that's the fact that jump cuts are your friend. I don't think that's going to shock anybody that when you are watching my video I'm not just continuously talking all the way through with no mistakes, no errors, no pauses, no ums, no likes, no anything like that. No, all of that has been cut out of my video and I'm also cutting out all of the extraneous things that really don't need to be in there. Maybe I'm cutting out rambles or tangents that I went on. A lot of the times when I sit down to film a video I am almost always filming videos for at least an hour at a time typically depending on what it is and the finished product that y'all get is typically between 20 and 30 minutes. That means I'm cutting out at least half of the raw footage because of these reasons. Because I'm cutting out extraneous material, I'm cutting out the mistakes that I'm making, I'm cutting out tangents and rants and things like that that really aren't pertinent to the content that I'm trying to give to you. Does this make editing a tedious time-consuming process? 100% absolutely and I think that's a reason why a lot of people choose not to. It's just because they don't have the time or they don't have the inclination to do this but I promise you it makes it an easier viewing experience when you are taking the time to tightly edit your video. So if you're wondering why it will take me maybe an hour to edit 10 minutes of raw footage, I'm trying to edit out any mistakes, verbalized pauses, and things of that nature to make it a more streamlined, cohesive, and easy to listen to product. I wish I had some more thorough and in-depth comprehensive advice for editing. That is probably the weakest point that I have when it comes to creating booktube content. I wish that I was better at it. I wish I had more skill and talent. I wish I had more knowledge about how to make my videos fancier and maybe more engaging and more entertaining. And I just don't have that information for you. I want you to know that even if you only have rudimentary or basic editing skills like I do, you can still make this happen for yourself. You can still come on here and create booktube content. It does not have to be fancily edited. And I think knowing that is another thing that can help you just get started because it's really difficult to get started knowing that you probably are not going to be able to compete with some of those bigger names out there that have all of this fancy editing and skills that they're doing and things like that. I'm also going to say that you should really be consistent in the content that you're posting. Even if you're only posting one video a week, make sure that your subscribers know that they can rely on you to post that one video a week. And again, you want to be posting consistently to grow your channel and build up that community. And kind of segueing into this, time management is certainly going to be a big aspect for it. So just to give you an idea, from start to finish, from getting ready 
ready to filming to editing to uploading for just one 30 minute video. We're probably looking around four hours dedicated to all of the process. It is definitely time consuming. So do what you know is going to work best for you. I film on the weekends. I then start the editing process over the weekend and then I will do more editing during the week and just work on getting them up consistently on the days that I say that I'm going to post. And if because of your schedule, you can only do one video a week, do one video a week. But like I said, be consistent with that video. It's still going to help you build the community engagement that you are looking to build. Now getting into the social aspect of booktube, there is definitely a social responsibility that you have. You really want to be sure that you're keeping an eye on and responding to the comments that are left on your videos, because this is going to help you build that community that you are looking to build here on booktube. And I can't tell you how meaningful it is when the content creator actually acknowledges and responds to your comments. Even if you're just liking the comment, you are letting the person who commented know that you saw the comment and maybe you just don't have anything to say in regards to it, but you're letting them know that you have seen the comment. And that is super important and special. And that is how you are going to connect with your audience. In a similar vein, I would also suggest not being afraid to comment on your favorite creators, because first of all, it helps them. It helps them with the algorithm. But also if you are leaving thoughtful comments on their videos, a lot of people are also going to be able to find your channel that way, especially if they're relating to the comment that you're leaving. They're going to say, hey, like I agree with this person. Let me click on their channel and see what they're all about. And you might be able to increase engagement that way. So responding to comments on your channel and commenting on other channels is vitally important to build the community that you're looking to build here on booktube. And in addition, do not be afraid to gather inspiration from your favorite creators as well. Take a look at what they're doing in their videos and seeing what maybe is working for them in terms of the content that they're creating. And maybe try to implement it into your videos as well. This is a wonderful community. And even though it is now much bigger than it was, and some might say it's oversaturated, it is teeny, teeny, tiny compared to some of the other niches like the beauty community on YouTube. So we are relatively small and tight knit with the comparison of other YouTube communities. And I'm not saying that booktube is entirely without its faults or toxic people, but for the most part, we're all very supportive and encouraging and we're willing to help whenever possible. And so take advantage of the community aspects of this platform. Also, another point when it comes to creating content, don't let anybody make you feel like you have to reinvent the wheel. I know that a lot of the bigger, super popular booktubers out there are doing these wild and wacky and unique and crazy ideas. I am here on booktube for a lot of the staples. I want to see TBRs. I want to see wrap ups. I even want to see book hauls and unhauls and things like that. I want the videos that I'm watching to be as informative as they are entertaining. And I don't necessarily find a lot of those one off vlogs or videos to be all of that informative. Are they fun? Absolutely. But those are not why I'm here on booktube. And so if you want to use ideas that you're getting from other content creators, that is fantastic. But also do not be afraid to stick to some of the staple classic booktube videos, because I think that's what a lot of us are still here to see. Also, I want to just briefly touch upon creation of thumbnails. Now, if you're anything like me and creativity is very difficult for you, or maybe you're a little bit technologically challenged like I am, creating the thumbnails is another daunting task, just like editing. But what you may not realize is that the creation of a great thumbnail is very important because it's what's going to draw people to your channel. Now, again, I am in no way, shape or form an expert on thumbnail creation. However, these are some tips and tricks that I think could be helpful for you. So first, I would actually go onto YouTube and do a search for a video that's similar to your own. So say, for example, you are doing a book haul. Maybe you type in book haul into YouTube and you see what pops up and you see the thumbnails. YouTube typically tells you how many views that a video has. Now, a lot of that's also going to be directly correspondent to the subscribers that they have. But a lot of people are getting views simply because they had such an engaging YouTube thumbnail. This is going to give you some inspiration to what you're hoping your aesthetic for your channel is going to be. When you're looking at a thumbnail, what really attracts you to the video? What are some aspects that you like to see and incorporate that into the thumbnail that you are making? And really there are not necessarily any hard or fast rules for creating a thumbnail, but one thing that you definitely want to keep in mind is that the font needs to be a decent size because you want people to be able to see it, whether or not they are on a desktop or a mobile phone. So be sure that your font is like big and bold and out there. And again, will catch somebody's eye, right? You want them to be able to easily see your thumbnail and read what your video is going to be about. So font is definitely an important one. You also want to make sure that there's not necessarily too much text. You don't want there to be so much to read. You want to be able to accurately represent your video in few words, just so people can get an idea of what they're going to be watching. And you can also do things to make your thumbnails pop. For example, when I'm making a thumbnail, I actually blur the background to make my face pop out as well as the font on my videos. So that makes it a little bit more eye catching. I actually use Canva for creating all of my YouTube thumbnails. And I actually find Canva to be a very important tool for this process, especially for people like me who are not technologically savvy, who need a little bit of assistance and a little bit of inspiration, who might not be necessarily 
creatively inclined. And I think Canva does a great job of helping you with all that because they have all of the fonts. They even have backgrounds that you can utilize if you want to and all kinds of things that you can incorporate into your thumbnail. But when you're creating a thumbnail, again, the most important thing is you want it to be engaging. You want it to attract attention. And also most importantly, you want people to be able to understand what your video is about really quickly when they're looking at your thumbnail. If they don't understand what your video is about just by looking at your thumbnail, they're not likely going to click on your video. So the thumbnail is kind of the visual representation of your video. And that's why you want to make it stand out and make it pop. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Perfection is the enemy of progress. Do not let an unperfect thumbnail or an unperfect video prevent you from posting it. Just get started and figure everything else later. Hello, everybody. So since I'm talking about thumbnails, I thought I would go ahead and come on here and walk you through how I create my thumbnails as well as how I actually upload a video because I didn't talk about some of the technical steps of that. So I thought I would show you here. I use Canva for all of my thumbnail needs and Canva has really been a life-saving tool for somebody like me who is not very creative or technologically savvy. So whenever I need to go create a thumbnail, I go over here to create a design. And as you can see, when I click on that, there's an option to select a YouTube thumbnail and it's going to make it the exact size that you need for your YouTube thumbnail. So here I am on a blank slate and I can do absolutely whatever I want. Now, this is not going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial on how I think you should create your thumbnail because the way that I create it is just the way that I create it. And you might be way better at this than I am or way more creative at this than I am. So I'm just showing you how I go about doing it, trying to give you an idea of how simple it can actually be for when you want to go create your thumbnail. So I'm going to go over here to uploads. So while I'm recording at the very end of the video, I will stop to take my thumbnails and I will screenshot those images and upload them here. So then I will go ahead and add this one to Canva and I will resize it to make sure it's the size that I want. And since I want my background to be blurred in Canva, I don't have the ability to just cut out my face and then blur the background. I kind of have to do it in a couple of steps. So I'm going to blur the background first. I'm going to blur the whole image. Okay, so now that this is done, I'm actually going to go here to uploads. I'm going to add this picture again. Only this time when I go to edit photo, I'm going to do a background remover. And when this is done, you'll be able to see that now my background is blurred. And what this kind of does is it's going to help me stand out. And what's also going to help me stand out is I'm going to go ahead and add a shadow around this. And I'm going to make it a little bit less thick. So there you can see that my background kind of blurs and I pop. And this is also going to allow my text to pop. So I'm just going to go ahead and pretend like I'm adding text to my video. And I'm just going to say something like booktube video idea. And here's where you can kind of play around with size, font, effects. So for example, I kind of like the rounded fonts a little bit. So maybe I change this font and I go to effects here. And let's say I want to do shadow and I want the shadow to be a different color. And so there we go. Or I typically like some white font. So maybe I will do this and have the shadow be a darker background. So it stands out just a little more. And you can actually go here and adjust the transparency. So now that shadow is a little bit more opaque. And then you can go ahead and like make this really, really big if you wanted to. We could do something like that. And I can send this to the back and then maybe I want to make it a little bit bigger so it stands out. Here's just kind of an example how I make my thumbnails and how I'm trying to make both my face as well as the text pop. And I'm trying to do it with minimal text. I want to give viewers an idea of what my video is going to be in a second or two and no more so that it can quickly attract them to the video. So now once my video is edited and exported and I've done my thumbnail, I will go over here to YouTube and it's time to upload a video. So I will go to create, upload video, and here is where I'm taken to the upload screen. Now I can technically upload directly to YouTube from my video software, but I just prefer to do it this way. I have all of my videos saved in a specific folder here. And so I will just go ahead and click on one. Let's go ahead and just do this one really quick. So it's going to upload. Here is where I would be able to alter my title. And here you can see this is automatically populated because I have set channel defaults. There's a place that you can do that in YouTube so that I do not have to continuously type out all of this stuff every single time. So when I'm done with my thumbnail, I need to go ahead and download it so that I am ready to upload that into YouTube. So let's go ahead and download it. And then when it's done here, I'm going to go to upload thumbnail. I'm going to go to downloads and bam, there's my thumbnail playlists. I have a bunch of different playlists. So I'm going to just say book miss 2023. Let's just do that. And here's where you can put tags. Now I've heard mixed things on how important this actually is, but I still do it. So I actually have a tool called TubeBuddy that helps me with certain 
certain things on YouTube, this is a service that I pay for. You're not going to see all of this on YouTube if you do not have this service. But you can see that it helps me kind of automatically generate some things that I might want to put in tags like reading stats, 2023 stats, end of year stats, things like that. And then I can just include a bunch of my own. Maybe I do booktube, maybe I do small booktuber. So I'm going to add as many tags as I can possibly think of that are relevant to the video. And then I usually pretty much ignore most of the rest of this. It's, it's pretty much correct as it is. Now, pretty much the only thing I do here is that I add an end screen. And since I've done this so many times before, it pretty much automatically knows the style. This is where it's going to appear in the video. There's really nothing more that I need to do with this. You'll have to go ahead and kind of select your own way of doing an end screen when you get to the end of the video. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to move on. This is just letting me know that it's still checking my video for any copyright issues and that's fine. And here's where I get to choose whether I keep it private, whether I keep it unlisted so only specific people have access to it. Public is for everybody but what I typically do is I schedule it. So I typically schedule it to go public at a specific time. So now that I walked you through all that I'm going to go back here for a little bit and talk a little bit more about the description box. I truly appreciate a very detailed description box. It's actually kind of obnoxious to me when I go to a description box and there's no information there. Now you don't have to be as detailed as mine but what I typically do is I say a brief blurb. I'll be like hi friends here are all of my reading stats from 2023. I hope you enjoy. And then I actually do timestamps in most of my videos. So say for example, I was doing my new release video. I pretty much start at zero zero with an introduction. And then once I've jumped into the meat of the video, then I will go ahead and do more timestamps. So let's say in my new release video, I'm going to break it down by release date. So maybe at 2.13, I talk about March 5th book releases. And then maybe at 6.32, we're gonna talk about March 12th book releases and so on and so forth. And this way people can access the parts of your video that they're really interested in seeing. And again, here's where I might put any videos or people that I want to mention. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, Brittany over at Be The Book Nerd. Here I can just tag her in my video if I mentioned her in my video or Sarah over at Sarah's Nightstand. We can tag her too. And then books mentioned. I'm an Amazon affiliate. So let's say that I mentioned a book right off the top of my head. Let's talk about Starling House and I want to link it. So I'm actually going to go over here to to Amazon. I have an Amazon associate stripe. Like I said, this is not going to be applicable to you unless you are an Amazon associate. So let's go ahead and pull up Starling House. I'm going to pull up exactly what I'm looking for. And then um, let's go ahead and just say hardcover. It doesn't matter. It'll take you right to the screen and then you can select your own format. And then this is going to generate the link and then bam. And then I can continue through doing the rest, but I've already done it. And then I can say schedule and then it's going to process my video. And here you can see that it's popped up here. It is scheduled to go live on February 18th at 12. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete this before I forget and somebody wonders if I've been drinking. There you have it y'all. That is just a very brief run through of how I create my thumbnail and how I upload the video and some things that you might want to keep in mind when you are doing the same and I hope you found it helpful. And the very final thing that I want to say just is have fun doing it. This has to be something that you legitimately love and want to do and you're okay focusing your time and effort into it just like any other hobby. And so I just want to say that if you are going to go into creating a booktube channel make sure that you are doing it for the right reasons. Make sure that you are doing it because you love books, you love reading, you want to share that with the booktube community and you want to make bookish friends and you want to talk about books with them and just overall be excited to be here in this space. And being excited again is going to shine through in your videos. People are going to be able to tell and that's going to be something that attracts them to you and your videos. All right, everybody, that is it. Those are really all of the things that I want to say. I just wanted this to be as authentic as possible. So this is not meant to be comprehensive. This is just meant to be kind of a kick in the pants to let you know that you can do this. If you want to create a booktube channel, you absolutely can. If you are a content creator of any kind, whether it's on booktube or YouTube, and you have additional tips that you would like to leave down below in the comments, please feel free to do so. I would love to see them. And I'm sure everybody would love to have the additional information as well. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, but you want to let me know that you are here, go ahead and leave me some type of video emoji, like a camcorder or a VHS tape or something like that. And as always, if you like this video, or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would sure love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with the books that I might talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.